little, little words can make a big difference, right? And so the key word that you need to have a look for when we're talking about centers of motion is the word about. Now, about is such a general word, you might think, well, what does it have to do with anything, right? I want to call your mind all the way back to like year seven geometry when, when you talk about um, symmetry, rotational symmetry, reflectional symmetry, and we would say, reflect this, you know, reflect this shape about, and then we would give you a line. I would say, okay, that means you reflect across that. You don't just reflect it over here or wherever you want. You have to look at that line in particular. Or we might say, here is a shape, right? And I would like you to rotate it, but I don't just want you to rotate it anywhere. I want you to rotate it about a particular point, like say that, right? Which is why you won't just get a shape on top of itself. You would get, for instance, something like this. That's the pivot point, right? So when you see the word about, it actually means something very specific in our context, that the center of motion is whatever is about to come after the word about, okay? Usually they will say about the origin, okay? But in some cases, they will not. And that's what we're gonna have a look at in question 12. So, let's stay with black. Read along with me. A particle moves according to, and then they give you this equation. Let's write that, that equation down together. X equals three minus two. 2t. Okay, so when they want you to see that a particle is moving and it's not about the origin, they will do this, generally speaking, in one of two ways. They will either use the method I was just talking to you about, they'll say about, and then they'll provide you the center of motion if they're feeling charitable. But other times they will not tell you what the center of motion is. They will just give you an equation and in, inside, tucked into that equation, if you work with it, which is what they ask us to do, you will find the center of motion is somewhere else. So they say that's in terms of centimeters and seconds. And then in part A, they say, use trigonometric identities to put the equation into a different form. So let's write down what that form is. It says x equals x naught. Minus a cos and t. Right. Now, before we embark on this thing, let's just point out the things about this that are familiar. Okay. Firstly, if I just hide this guy here, right, if I just hide that, tell me what you know about the motion of this particle. You know lots of things. It starts at. It starts at. Okay, hold on. It doesn't. Let's let's. I'll untake the idea that you just said, which is correct. But I'm going to be a little more specific, right? This, t this particle does not start at the origin. Yeah, this one, okay? When we are be being given like information about something and they say come up with an equation, we generally choose sine or cos based on where we start, okay? Now this will not start at the origin, but doesn't quite start at one either, and you already fixed it up. Where does this start? It starts at A. Okay, what else can you tell me? What, is, what does this thing tell us? This is gonna tell us the period, like how quickly it waves up and down, okay? Um, what about the fact that, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Oh no, I'll put this here now, okay? How about that? What does that tell you now? It's been flipped upside down, so it's still going to be moving in the same way, but now, like, to begin with, what direction is it going in? It's going, think, think. What does cos normally do? Cos normally starts up here, and it sort of goes down, right? So now we've actually turned it upside down, so it's starting down here, and it's increasing, it's going up, okay? And then lastly, they've slapped this guy on, right? So what effect does that have on the graph? Yeah, it, it shifts it, it slides it up, um, x naught units, okay? So this changes where, where the whole thing is moving around. So this guy here, you might wanna highlight this, right? This is going to be your center of motion. It used to be the origin, but you've taken the entire thing and you've gone whoop, or depending on whether x naught is negative, you might have taken it down, okay? But this is the center of motion here. Okay, so now that we know what, what on earth we're actually dealing with, now can we get from here to here? How do we do it? Well, they've already given us a big clue. They're not going to give you these clues later on to use trigonometric, trigonometric identities. And you can see what I've got has got a cos squared in it, and what I end with does not have a cos squared in it. Okay, so I want you to think about the trigonometric identities that you know that relate cos squareds with just regular old coses. Have a think. Maybe I'll write it off on the side here. What identity could we use that has a cos squared in it that will also have cosines in it? Cos 2 theta. Cos 2 theta. 
I don't need this anymore. Maybe you want to write cos 2 theta on the right hand side over here with me and we'll have a think about this. We haven't worked um, explicitly with, with trig identities for a little while, so hopefully by the time we do this a few times, it will start to become more familiar with you. But for now, we need to remember what's going on here. Cos 2 theta does have cosines in it. It's got a cos squared, like so. But it has something else as well, doesn't it? It has a minus sine squared. Now, if you have a great memory, you will also know that there are two alternative forms to this, and you'll have them in your memory, and you'll know those are actually going to be much more useful because I have no signs in here at all, right? But if you're like me, then you do not remember those because you get the signs flipped backwards and you're like, there's one has a two and one doesn't have a two, and you don't remember which one's which. So I always remember this one and then I get whichever other one I need off the basis of this, okay? If I've only got cosines and I don't want any signs, what should I do to this sine squared? Okay, so I can, I can do a division, right? That will turn everything into like tan and sec and all that kind of thing. So that might be handy if I have tan or sec here. In this case, I do not. What's something else I could do, well, that would work, but for something else, with this? Okay, I can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cos squared equals one, which tells me this. Oh, it was a bad idea to use this. Um, I can replace the sine squared with this. Are you okay with that? That's the same as sine squared over there. So if I rearrange now just a teeny bit, you can see I'm going to have a double negative here. So I'm going to get 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Are you okay with that? How's that? Now, like I said, um, some of you, and I hope if you're, if you're like, yeah, I'm always the one who runs out of time in an exam, right? You need to be able to call on this immediately. You need to have that fluency and that memory. But if you're like, I can't remember it, um, I know that I'm going to remember it wrong. That's the trouble that I always had. Then come back to this. We're always pretty good with that in comparison. And then get this from there. Okay. Now, can I use that over here directly? I'm ever so close. I have to tweak it a little bit because for starters there's thetas, not t's. Uh, and secondly, like I have a weird number of t's in here, right? I don't just have one t. I can't just say, oh, there's a cos squared and there's a cos squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more line and I'm going to replace all my thetas. See how there's a 2 cos squared 2t here? And there's a 2 cos squared theta here. So every theta I'm going to replace with 2t, okay? Woo. Sorry, there we go. So here's the first one. That's going to become 2t. If that's become 2t, what's this guy going to become? 4t, very good. It's um, two lots of 2t. There you go. So if you want, you can put an extra line just to make it really obvious that if you add 1 to both sides, you're going to get 1 plus cos 4t on this side, and you're going to get this 2 cos squared business on the other. Okay, but I'm happy with that. I'm going to bring it back over here now. I'm going to say x equals 3, take away 2 cos squared 2t is cos 4t plus 1. Are you okay with that? Maybe just so that you're all on the right page, I'll put the extra line in here. Oh, this is dying fast. But I just got there. There you go. So do you see how directly I can substitute that in? Okay, now, that's all the uh, trigonometric identities that I need. I just need to tidy this little mess up. What happens with the 1 inside the brackets? What's it going to do? Hey, Mrs. Lees, when do we learn about expanding brackets? When is that? What oh, year is that? Well, I'm doing a lot of it with year 8. Year 8? Okay, year 8. Oh, How are they with expanding brackets? Are they okay with that? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, I wonder if you, what if you twelves could. Oh yeah, that that can be a bit of an issue, right? Do you think after four years they'd be better? They'd be more comfortable? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm still. I, I'll keep on roasting if you want until you give me an answer. What's going to happen to the plus one in the brackets? It's going to become minus one, which interacts with the three and leaves you with two. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you did know the answer. That's lovely. All right. So. So what do I do with this? Right? Well, we've just answered part A. We've put the equation in this form. X equals, there's x naught right there. What did we say x naught was? What's the significance of it? It's the center of motion. It's the center of motion. Very good. I'm going to use that in a second. Um, and then you've got this. This is my uh, a cos nt. What's the a in this case? One. It's 1. 1. So that's going to be useful in a minute as well. And there's our n. All right, fantastic. Now we're ready to interpret this thing. 